Now, as we mourn the death of Her Majesty the Queen, America is mourning the 21st anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Today, New York has been at the centre of remembrance ceremonies as Americans pay tribute to their fallen victims. It was in the aftermath of that terrible atrocity that the Queen delivered one of the most famous quotes of her long reign, uttering the immortal words, but nothing that can be said can begin to take away from the anguish and pain of these moments. Grief is the price we pay for love. And in a powerful breaking of tradition the day after the attack, Her Majesty ordered the Star-Spangled Banner to be performed during the changing of the guard ceremony at Buckingham Palace. Look. Now, no one is more connected with the events of that harrowing day than the former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani, who just was able to pull the city together. I'm delighted to say that Mayor Giuliani joins me today. Uh, Rudy, look, I know, firstly, today is incredibly difficult for you. uh, So thank you so much for sharing your time. Uh, Of course, 21 years ago, this was one of the darkest periods for New York, how much did it mean to you when you heard that quite incredible statement from the Queen of England? Oh, my goodness. I I don't know that I can adequately describe, if you haven't been through an experience like that, what it meant. Uh, Maybe I can analogize it to if you lose a mother or a father or a child or a loved one and someone, you know, some great world figure, the queen, or says something about how wonderful your child was, or to to know that the queen of England was thinking about us, concerned about us, on our side, supporting us. Oh my goodness, it had a spiritual dimension to it that cannot be uh, exaggerated. When you get attacked like we did, or like Britain did, let's say in in the in the in the in, in the Second World War, you feel alone. You feel like you're handling it all by yourself. And the minute uh, people empathize with you and understand it, particularly the brilliance with which she did it, it's um, it's, it's invaluable. Can't 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 you cannot emphasize enough how important that is to the morale and how important it was to bring the morale of the people of New York back. You know, the the Queen of England is a very special figure in America, complicated by the fact that we were once a colony, but that's a long time ago. Uh, But her dignity, her grace, I mean, she's someone, I, I can't imagine many Americans not having great respect and admiration for her. Rudy, were you aware at the time, because obviously you had so much going on, your city had just been subjected to this terrible, unprecedented terrorist attack, but were you aware at the time that the Queen had allowed this dramatic change of protocol and ordered the Star Spangled yes. Banner to be played outside the palace? Oh, because oh, it was yes, just two yeah. days after your, 9-11. It was the 13th of September. Your, uh, your ambassador was a, was, a, was, a, was, a good, was a friend of mine. And I had I'd become close to him already before that. And you lost a lot of citizens on September 11. And immediately you wanted to join, meaning your government now, wanted to join in the ceremonies. And uh, you, you held a beautiful ceremony at St. Thomas Church uh, that Tony Blair came to and the ambassador um, and also read a great statement from the Queen at that um it was a religious service. Can't remember if it was a mass or just a religious service, but it was a religious service for the citizens of the United Kingdom who died uh, at at the World Trade Center. 
and then, of course, for everyone, but in particular for, for them. And uh, I was kept very much aware of the different statements that she made, the ambassador would call, uh, or in some cases, Tony Blair himself, who was here quite a bit at that time. I took Tony Blair to ground zero maybe three times. He was very, uh, he was very, very moved by it. He was very angry about it. You know, he, he, he uh, somehow it brought back to him experiences that his family had had in the Second World War. I can't remember exactly the conversations that we had about it. But um, he began telling me about the experiences that his family had. I think that's one of the reasons, and now I'm going a little far afield, but I think that's one of the reasons why he supported George Bush so much. He felt almost as if this was a reliving of the attacks that England went through. No, indeed. And look, there is something almost spiritual, isn't there, when you visit the World Trade Center site? I did so just a couple of years after the attack. The Queen actually visited in 2010. That was her first visit to New York since 1976. And the memorial was still being finalized, but it must have been important to New Yorkers uh, that she paid that visit. Yes, it was. And, you know, it's it's a, it's um, a shame that she didn't get to see the the finished one. But it was it was pretty well laid out and you could get a pretty good sense of what it was like when she did come. But, you know, of course, when Tony Blair came, one of the things that happened with most people that got to see the site in comparison to what they saw on television, it was much bigger. Television did not convey the uh, enormity, enormity of the attack, yeah. how, how much it spread out. I even remember when President Bush flew over it for the first time three days later. He said, oh, my goodness. And I knew what he was reacting to was this was so much bigger than what he had seen on television. And I, I remember um, the, 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 the there was a particular bond, I think, with the people of England because, because of the, first of all, because of the time that Prime Minister Blair spent, because of the fact that the Queen singled us out for both a uh, state, statement, uh, the, star, the Star Spangled Banner, uh, and also because I, in my own mind, I analogized it quite a bit to the Battle of Britain as a way of finding um, courage to get through it. Indeed. And of course, it was in February, the February after the attacks, that the Queen actually invited you to London and you accepted an honorary knighthood, uh, which I believe you did on behalf of all New Yorkers. I did. I, t I, t I told the Queen when she, get, when, she get, when she gave it to me that I, I uh, felt unworthy, but that I, w I, I felt that I should accept it on behalf of all New Yorkers because I stood on the shoulders of giants. And she and she told me that that is the way every great leader feels. I thought that was beautiful. She also thanked me for the comments that I made about Winston Churchill. Did which she? I thought was quite remarkable that she knew that. <laughs> yeah. That I had made. Winston Churchill has always been a hero of mine, and I've read virtually everything about him. But it is true that the night of September 11, when I went home, I read a, a very recent biography, specifically about the Battle of Britain, so that I could pick up some advice on how to act with my people. Yeah. Because your leadership that day, it was so strong, but it felt like it came very naturally to you. So that's very interesting to me that you look to a figure like Churchill as the days and the weeks went on. Well, he was, I mean, he, Churchill's been a hero since I was a child. Uh, my, my hero, my big heroes are, Chir are Churchill and, um, and Ronald Reagan, and um, and I have great love and admiration for England. I, I understand, as a lawyer, I understand how much we owe 
to our background, our, our uh, background as an Anglo background. And um, you can't help admire the Queen. I mean, given, given the enormity of the pressures under which she's operated, the humility and the dignity and the, is a great role model for us who have to operate under difficulties at times. And sometimes you feel if she can do it, well, then you can do it. Mm. It could be hard. It's going to be hard without her. Yeah, it will. It's hard to imagine a world without her, actually. Uh, look, your positivity is great, and I know it's how many Americans feel. We were discussing earlier in the show, though, it has been disappointing to see liberal media in America, notably the New York Times, uh, the Washington Post and the MS uh, NBC network trashing the Queen, trashing the British Empire over the past few weeks. Uh, is that a feeling that is shared more widely by Americans or is it something that's very limited no, to the liberal no, media no, no, elite? No, no. I would say that's an elitist an elitist concept. They're the same people that trash America. Don't feel, don't feel singled out. They say even worse things about my country. <laughs> yes. um, I don't know what's wrong with them, but uh, th there's no question that if you t if you look at England and you look at the United States, of course we've done things wrong in our history and we've made mistakes and we've done some terrible things. But then when you compare us to the rest of the world, I don't know how much of a civilization there would be without us. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a question of not having perspective. You know, not having perspective about the fact that these are human countries, but human countries that just happen to have contributed much more than most other countries. Mm. And uh, that's, that's, if you're going to be a honest interpreter of history that's an honest, that's that, that's just a plain honest judgment and there are people that are uncomfortable with that i don't know exactly why that is um, but i would say the vast majority of americans even those who probably don't agree with the monarchy right we have a different form of government find the queen to be an exceptionally admirable uh, person and and to have played a very very important role in history no, indeed, uh, as did you on 9-11. So looking back 21 years, Mayor Giuliani, I know it is emotional for you, but what was it that managed to get you through when you first learned uh, of the attacks on the World Trade Center? You know, it, it, it's going to sound an awful lot like what I've been hearing in the uh, documentaries about the Queen, most of which, in fact, every single which of one I've watched in the United States were extremely favorable. Maybe I just missed those other stations. A sense of duty. It was my job. I took an oath of office to guide the people of the city of New York to be their leader. And I had, and whether I felt strong or I didn't, whether I felt able to communicate or not, I had to. I didn't have a choice. It was my duty. What would happen to my city if I didn't? I'm sure there were times, I surely don't want to analogize myself to the queen, but I'm sure there were times when the queen said to herself, if I don't act in a certain way, what's going to happen to my country, even though I don't feel that way, even though it hurts, even though if I were just an ordinary human being, I'd react differently. I remember when I was first told that some of my closest friends had died. Normally, if it were just me as a human being, I'd probably go in a room and cry. I, didn't, I couldn't do that. If I went in the room and cried, the whole city would have gone in the room and cried. So I had to stand there and, and, and accept it and say to myself, I'll think about that tomorrow. Today, I'm thinking about what's the best way to get out of this terrible situation. How do I give my people hope? How do I get them to look up and realize this is not going to last forever? Reminds me of the statements that she made about coronavirus. Yeah. When things were quite bad in your country with the prime minister and in, uh, in the hospital and, and rather ill. 
basically just saying to people, there's going to be another day. We're going to get beyond this. That's so extraordinarily helpful because it's honestly because it's true and you need that perspective. And some people who are leaders are capable of controlling their emotions and being able to give that perspective. And other, some other people can't just can't do that. No, indeed. Beautifully put. Look, I know it's a very tough uh, day for you. We're all thinking of uh, New Yorkers today. We were all New Yorkers on 9-11, and we're also thinking of the Queen. So thank you so much uh, for joining us to pay tribute. Rudy Giuliani, of course, mayor of New York during the 9-11 attacks 21 years ago today.